to be in the house of God today. Who's ready to receive a word from God this morning? We have Ivan Tate here and he's going to be bringing an on fire word. But right now what we're going to do as a church, we are going to see the kingdom of God expanded. And how we're going to do that is by helping to get our church book, Pastor Markle's first book, to number one bestseller on Amazon. Come on, let's get excited about that. This book is called Guaranteed Growth. And this book will guarantee to help people and ministries and business leaders and others grow guaranteed. The biblical principles in this book do not fail. So this is what we're going to do all together at the same time. There's two ways that we can do this right now. You can scan this QR code up here on the front. I'm going to get out the way for those that want to scan it. Or number two, what you can do is go straight to Amazon and just search Guaranteed Growth by Marco Garcia. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do it right here. I'm going to scan this code. Just tap the, tap the QR code. Tap. Open it. And it takes me directly to the book. Purchase your copy. You can buy one for a friend. You can buy one for a business partner. You can buy one for someone in a ministry. But we're going to get Pastor Marco's book to number one bestseller on Amazon. So right away, let's go in and purchase. I'm buying my copy right now. Add to cart. Buy now. My wife has Prime. Obviously, all wives in here have Amazon Prime. So I'm going to go in and get it like tonight maybe. It's like they're already ready. I don't know how they get it to me so fast. Purchase your copy right now. Let's help Pastor Marco get his book to number one. Let's spread the gospel all throughout the world. Let's help, let's help make this book known. Let's make it happen. I see all kinds of people on their phone right now. This is perfect. Let's do it together. Well, as we're doing that, you can, you can encourage others to do that as well. We're getting ready to jump into the word of God today. We're getting ready to hear an on fire, and on time word. This is our family. He's not a guest here. He is our family. He is really a father in the faith. who someone who's spoken and imparted into our ministry time and time again. And today we believe God's going to move and speak to us. Let's get ready to receive a word from God this morning. Who's ready to receive? Why don't we give a Way World Outreach welcome to our family, Ivan Tate. Come on, church. Let's give him a welcome All today. Righty. Thank you, hermano. Thank you, everybody. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Let's give a hand for the breakthrough that's coming for the Compton campus because that's going to be a breakthrough. That's going to be amazing. You should give a hand to Pastor Marco and his family because they put their lives where their mouth is. Praise the Lord. I mean, that is brave. And Pastor Marco has a spirit of courage on him and bravery. And let me just tell you something that anybody who is willing to risk their lives is going to get miracles from God. It's one of the prerequisites for the miraculous to happen is that you have to risk your life. Miracles don't come when you're sitting at home watching TV. Miracle comes when you're standing in front of people with guns. That's when the miracles happen because the angels are there in thousands and thousands. I mean, there are angels going to Compton by the thousands. They're going to go everywhere you walk. They're going to be with you. A 10-foot angel is going to be walking with you because people are going to hell, ladies and gentlemen. They are burning in the fires of hell, and God has created the Way World Outreach to literally plunder hell and populate heaven. Everybody say it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to plunder hell and populate heaven. Praise God. What an honor to be in this church. What an honor to have a man of God like Pastor Marco. I preach in different churches all year round. I have about 300 churches, you know, that that I go to and, and minister at and many more that are available if I had the time. But let me just tell you that the Way World Outreach, I am boasting on this because there is a spirit of takeover on this church. This is a takeover church. I have never told that to anybody, but this is a takeover church. 18 years you spent pouring concrete into the floor and a foundation and building the walls, but now it's time to take things over. Everybody say it out loud. It's time for a Holy Ghost takeover. Look at somebody and tell them that. It's time for a Holy Ghost takeover. So as we're sitting here 
you know, thinking, and before I start, I, I in, in the time that I have left, I, I just want to say to you that if you don't know the greatness of your church, you will take it for granted and not get the benefits from it. But if you understand how great the Way World Outreach Church is in heaven, that in heaven all the angels know the name of this church, that in heaven all of heaven knows who the Way World Outreach Church is. Because do you know how many churches are actually risking their lives, putting their families in danger and doing all that. I mean, I'm sowing my son into the church. I'm sowing my, my daughter-in-law into the church. I'm sowing my grandson into the church. I mean, I'm putting my, I mean, my son wouldn't have come without my permission. I just want you to know. But I mean, this is something special. You are in the midst of a move of God. And it's takeover time. Take over Compton. Take over all of L.A. Take over all of California. Take over all of Arizona. Take care of all of Can I mean, take care. Just take over everything. Praise God. But most important, understand that you have to let the Holy Ghost devour you. You can't protect pieces of you from God. You have to let the Holy Ghost stand in front of you and eat you completely. Just devour you. Till nothing is left except Jesus. Praise God. Now, how many of you were here for the graduation or how many of you graduated in there? Would you all come up here if you graduated, if you're one of the graduates? Come up here to the front. Okay, I don't, I don't want to have to convince you, so just come. No, don't, don't, don't come up here. Don't come up here. Just stand right here. Don't, don't come up here, but just stand right here. And how about the worship team? Let me have all of you up here, all of the worship team that came. Just come on up here. Yeah, and you're going to face this way. But uh, just stand up here if you would, everybody, all the musicians and things like that. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit. In the midst of ministering to people, I want to talk to you about how to get the most out of your church in the next 18 years. And because uh, there's going to be a, a Holy Ghost, very powerful moves of God uh, from God in the Holy Spirit. Very powerful. Oh, so let me just say, as, as the people are coming up here uh, to stand up here, because, you know, there is a, a season of rain that is coming on the church. And it's going to rain on the church. And all the dry ground around here is going to be turned into a seedbed of the Holy Spirit. There are things that God is telling me, speaking to me about the church. And he, he's giving me pictures right now as I'm just walking around up here. And the first picture uh, that I'm looking at, and this is really important, is a big net. And that is the first prophetic thing that is happening the net of the church is expanding because you are now in an expansion season. And so the church is a net. You are like a net and you're going to take over souls. People that would normally go to hell that are not even intending not to go to hell. The net is going to chase them right into their houses, right into their bedroom, right into the kitchen. It's just going to literally take over their lives. Praise the Lord. So the second picture I have got, and I just wrote that right there when I was sitting, is of an oil can. And the Holy Spirit says that what God is going to do is going to be very big, but it's not going to be hard to do because the oil is going to be on it. If an engine has no oil, it burns up. But if an engine is regularly uh, the oil is regularly changed. You can get a million miles from a good engine easily if you take care of it. And God says this, I'm never going to stop sending the oil so that the bigger you get, the easier the work becomes. Because when you have oil, it's no longer work because there's no burnout. Burnout occurs when you do it with willpower and the soul. But when you do it in the spirit with the Holy Ghost, it refreshes you as you work. And that is an anointing that is coming on the church. The third picture I saw is of an ATM. Listen to me. This ATM was spitting out money. And this is what it means that the Holy Ghost is going to put five different people in this church that will be millionaires and will be able to write 
a check of a million dollars any time they want, and they will write it to build churches and to take care of the needs. Those people are called paymasters, and many of you will become paymasters as God delivers you from poverty and makes you supernaturally prosperous, and that's going to happen because the Holy Ghost is amazing. Praise the Lord. Look at somebody and say, I received that for myself. The fourth picture I saw was of a combine, and a combine goes out into the fields, and it, it literally gathers all the wheat. It gathers all the corn, and the anointing on this church will stay permanently to gather in the harvest and to gather in the wheat. Many of you that are out there, you don't know it yet, but you will become pastors. Some of you will become evangelists. Some of you will become apostles. It's all according to how much faith you have in the things you hear. Because if you don't have faith in what you hear, you remove its power to change you. Only if you have faith in what you hear does it have the power to change you. And if you don't have faith in it, then the words of God fall on you and drop to the ground because you have no faith in what is being said that it is coming from God and this is how you lose your destiny is by not being a man or a woman of faith that says woo that's a holy ghost all right woo all right woo I got that woo I got woo ah woo I got that mm, oh that's mine <laughs> I'm taking that home with me I'm not leaving that on the ground ah <laughs> And, and when you do that, then the word gets on you and it stays on you. Otherwise, you just sit there with, Ay, ¿qué está diciendo este hermano? Uh, what is going on here, man? What is happening with his brother? I don't know. He's losing his mind. That's because you're dead in faith and therefore you have nothing. You will never have anything and you'll always be broke until you stand up and say, I claim it all. I receive it all. It's all for me. The devil is a liar. The devil is defeated. We're going to change the world. <laughs> We're going to change the world. That's how you have to do it. Praise the Lord. Put out your hand like this. That's how you have to do it. Praise God, because that's the way the Lord is. So a spirit of prosperity and healing upon you, that it stays on you the rest of your life, and that everything you do from now on will be perfectly in harmony and time with the Holy Spirit. You are a deliverer of those that are bound up and enslaved, and you will spend your life setting captives free. Your words will be like bombs exploding strongholds of the devil, Everything that you've been through in your life was for a purpose. You will never be afraid. You will have guns pointed at you and other wicked things happen and you will destroy them all with the word of the Lord. Praise God. You will write books and have supernatural blessing. All the gifts of the Holy Spirit will be given to you by the Holy Ghost. You will test them for 10 years and then you will find the ones that are truly the ones you will flow in and many miracles will flow out of your hands. Praise God, your whole family will get saved, all of them bound up by the devil. In the name of Jesus, God gave you a brain. You will use it to figure out and to have strategy, vision, and perspective, and the whole world will see because God is going to make you famous. Praise God. In the name of Jesus, yes, the battle is over. The battle is over. The battle is over, and you are going to win, 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 and that will be your middle name. You'll see visions and have dreams, and the Lord will speak to you in your sleep. You'll hear music and angels singing, and he will give you things that you never thought could be had by a human being, and you will dwell in the beauties of the Lord. You will have the fragrance of the Holy Spirit on you day and night. Everywhere you go, the fragrance of the robes of Jesus will be with you. He will walk next to you, with you. He will hold your hand, and you will never be afraid, and you will not miss out on anything. You will have the best of the best of the best because the best is yet to come for you. Praise God. All your trouble is over and you will cast out devils out of tormented men and women and alcoholics and drug addicts shall be delivered. Praise God. You're a preacher. You will be an apostle. You'll have the anointing of the Holy Ghost and pastor in the name of Jesus. God knows everything you've been praying for. He's going to answer you now quickly and supernaturally. Before the month, before July is over, you will see three miracles in your family. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you will eat the manna from heaven. And God says you will be an overcomer. Praise God. 
Thank you, Jesus, for the blessing of the Lord that makes rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. You will never be broke. You will become very rich in God, in finances, and rich in God, in spiritual wealth, and the riches of heaven. Praise God. All right, sit down. Glory to God. Everybody say hallelujah. That's as fast as I can prophesy. <laughs> But when it flows like a river, it's not hard. I don't get burned out because I don't depend on myself. I don't rely on myself. I'm not like memorizing things to say. I just let the Holy Ghost flow, and it keeps me refreshed. For 50 years, I have been doing it, and I'm going to do it till I'm 100. And so, by the grace of God, I'll be preaching at the Wayworld Outreach at 100 years old. Glory to him. Hermanos, quiero hablar con usted las cosas del Espíritu Santo. Vamos a entender todas las cosas espirituales. So how do you get the most out of your church? This is what I want to share with you for a moment. And uh, 16 minutes, I want to give you this fast because the Bible says, Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Heaven is built with 12 gates around it. The gates are made out of pearls, jewels, diamonds, and they're priceless. There's 12 entrances into the kingdom of God, 12 entrances that all require Jesus, but there's different entrances to the kingdom of God. There's an entrance of salvation, but then there's an entrance of inheritance. There's an entrance of possession. There's an entrance of power. There's an entrance of relationship. There's an entrance of finances. There's an entrance of organization. There's an entrance of destiny. There's an entrance of, of things. There's, a, there's all kinds. There's 12 different kinds of entrances. The church, the job of the church is to destroy the gates of hell and open the gates of heaven. That is the job of the church. And that is the assignment on the way world outreach is the assignment is to plunder hell and populate heaven. Praise God. Many of you were not saved last year and now you're saved today. Praise the Lord. So getting the most out of your church, that's very important. How do you do that? Because it's important. What is the church? We know the church is an ark. It's a place of safety. It's a place where you go. We know the church is an army, for example. It's full of soldiers and warriors. It's where you go to fight battles and to win battles. That's the church. If you don't have a church, then you have no safety. If you don't have a church, then you have no army. You have no warriors. You have no protection. You are fighting the devil by yourself, and you're going to lose because the devil has been fighting since the beginning of time, and he knows how to defeat every person. He knows your weaknesses, your DNA inheritance. He knows all the things that are in your life. He knows everything about you. He knows how to defeat you because he defeated your dad and your mom and your grandparents and your grand grandparents. And he knows the DNA you have in your body and the weaknesses you have there. So you need an ark, a place to go and feel safe and be protected from the demonic world. You need an army so that you can battle, but not by yourself, but with brothers and sisters and say, hey, help me defeat this devil in my family. Help me break this curse that's upon me. Help me destroy this iniquity in my DNA. I want to do these bad things and these bad desires. But remember something. Nobody is born an alcoholic. Nobody is born perverted. But you are born with the seeds of perversion because you have an Adamic nature given to you by Adam and Eve, and the, the DNA you have has been in somebody else's body. So your DNA has already practiced the sins in your, in, inside there, there is desires that are manifested, and those desires are the liars of life. They're the ones that tell you, because you have this desire, this is who you are. No, it's who you are without God, but if you starve a thing, it will die, and if you feed a thing, it will grow. If you don't want to be an alcoholic, even though you have a desire to be one, don't feed the alcoholism, and it will surely die, dry up. If you don't want to be a homosexual, don't feed it. Just let it dry out. It's not who you are. It's not your identity. It's what you feed that determines who you are. And it's the same way when you go to church, your spirit man will be fed so that the desire to murder people, kill people, kidnap people, do all kinds of crimes, which you all have, everybody has. We're all crazy without God. You starve them. 
And pretty soon all those wicked desires stop coming. You need a church for that. You need an ark. You need an army. You need a bride. You're part of the bride. Why is it that Christians treat the church like a mistress? And even worse, like a whore. They visit her when they want to. And when they don't want to, they don't visit her. They pay her when they want to. And when they don't want to, they don't pay her. Unless the pimp is there. So don't partner with the pimp, Satan. You're part of the bride. And if you're a bride, you don't sleep with the groom until you're married. So when you pretend to be part of the church and you're a hypocrite and you're living a double life, you're just pimping on God. So what you do when you're a bride is you get married. See, the church can't help you till you marry her. I'm feeling the love right now, so I'm going to go over here and encourage myself. Ay, where to go, brother hermano, así se predica la palabra de Dios. Okay, so, so don't, don't visit the church. Marry the church. Because God is not giving out free love in the sense of perversion. No, you marry the church. You say, hey, this is my church. I love my church. I'm joining the church. I'm praising the church. I'm loving the church. I'm serving in the church. I'm belonging to the church. That's how you get things out of the church is that you got to marry it because the bride's job is to get married. The bride's job is not to be a mistress. Praise the Lord. The church is a body, the Bible tells us, a body, cuerpo, a body. If you don't find what you are in the body, you will dry up and die and fall into the ground. You got to find out, am I a nose? Am I supposed to sniff and smell? Am I eyes? Am I supposed to see? Am I ears? Am I supposed to hear? Because you have a joint you have to be connected to. Not a joint, but a joint. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, are you sure it's not a joint? No, it's a joint. I know some of you want it to be a joint, but it's a joint. If you think you're going to get something out of the church without being a joint, you're not going to. You got to be a joint, and then you got to connect to your assigned joint. If you're a foot, you don't belong on the head. If you're a mouth, you don't belong on the back of the leg. You got to find what you are. Well, you don't find that staying home. You don't find that watching TV from church, from, uh, from your house. You don't find that not coming to church. You don't find who you are. You'll never find who you are. Your identity will always be a secret until you get connected. Once you get connected, then the devil cannot destroy you because you are not standing by yourself. A nose cannot defeat the devil. An ear cannot defeat the devil. A foot cannot defeat the devil. But you connect them all together and the devil is coming down in your house, in your family, over your children, over your grandchildren, over your great-grandchildren. You got to be connected. Don't act like you're just some kind of nothing. Don't act like you're nobody. And don't feel sorry for yourself. Oh, you don't know anything about me. I got a lot of problems. I am hooked on cocaine and heroin. I've been on methamphetamines for 25 years. My teeth are falling out. Jesus don't want me. Jesus don't need me. He's got a, you are deceived by the devil. You are royal. You are part of the calling of the bride of Christ. You are priceless. You are beyond any value. Jesus died for you at Calvary and he shed his blood for you. Whoever you are, if you're the daughter of the president or if you're a prostitute, you have the same value in the eyes of God. Don't feel sorry for yourself. You're part of a body. Praise the Lord.
look at two people and say, híjole, hermano. It says, those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall grow and bloom like a palm tree. It doesn't say those that visit. It's planted. Praise the Lord. How do you get the most out of your church? You got to be planted in it. You got to say, this is my church. I'm going to be planted here. Because the church is a garden. It's a garden. It's where you get your spices. It's where you get the sweetness of your life. It's where you get the fruit in your life. It's where you develop the spiritual fruit that you will use to win the lost and to overcome your husband. And you will have to overcome your husband. You're going to have to overcome that woman. There should be a sign on every married couple. Prepare for hell. Because if you think your marriage is going to be heaven without you being heavenly, you are mistaken. Your husband, who may be a better Christian than you, you will eat him and devour him till there's nothing left. You understand that one of the purposes of getting married is for that person you marry to have an anointing to draw the devil out of you. They just have an anointing. They just know how to do it. Come on, devil. Come on. Da, da, da. If you have a spirit of murder, that wife can call it out. Yeah, if you have a spirit of divorce, that husband can call it right out of you. Those inherited wickednesses you got from belonging to Satan's church call the world. Praise God. Give someone a high five and say, I'm a garden. God is cultivating. God is turning over the soil. God is pulling out the weeds. God is killing all the worms. God is destroying all the bugs. I am a garden of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Praise God. You are a family. That's what the church is called. It's called a family. Do you just abandon your brothers because they're not saved? Do you say you're not my mother because you don't love me? You don't give me money? No, your family is your family. Everybody else in life may come and go. How many friends have you had that are gone? So if you're going to put your time into something, put it into your family. And your true family, the most important family you have is the family of God. Zaya, I am preaching right now, my little boy. I love you so much. I'll call you afterwards. Okay, now, he's five years old, I always answer. So... Think about it like this, that because you're a family, because you're a family, you're loyal and you're faithful. You don't talk bad about your family. You don't go around telling strangers your personal issues. You don't get the skeletons out and, and say, here's my brother's skeletons. This is all the bad stuff that he's done. You don't go around gossiping about your mother. You don't go around gossiping about your father. You don't talk bad about your family unless you're wicked. If you're wicked, you do that. But if you're a godly woman or a godly man, you don't gossip about anybody. You don't talk bad about anybody. You don't spread bad information. And if any, When God forgives your sins, they are forgiven and they are forgotten. You don't go over to the graveyard where God buried them and forgot them and drag out the skeleton and say, hey, look what they did 30 years ago. Let me show you who they really are. These are the people they really are. You don't do that because you're deemed as a wicked person when you do that. Treat your church like a family and you'll really reap from it and it'll bless you. Treat Pastor Marco like your father, your spiritual father. Listen to his words. Listen to his wisdom. And give money to pay off whatever is required. Do whatever you Sell a car if you got extra cars. Sell half your house. Rent it out. Go B&B. &B. Because you'll get back a thousand times more. 
Praise God. You see, some of you can't do what I'm telling you to do. That's why you'll never be who you're supposed to be because you cannot connect to this depth of unity. Praise the Lord. And finally, you're a home, and that's what the church is. And I only preached the first part of my sermon. But let me just tell you that you're a home. This is not an orphanage. Once you're adopted, you're no longer an orphan. You come as an orphan, but you're let in as a son and daughter of royalty because you have been adopted. Praise the Lord. God has adopted you. He is your father. He is your family, and he will take care of you. Can somebody act like you're saved and shout a little bit and say, glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Come on, magnify God. Lift up his holy name here in the church and say, I love my church. I love my church. 18 years more. Come on, say it. 18 years of possessing the land and taking everything that belongs to you. Sit down for a minute and close your eyes if you would. I want you to close your eyes so you can shut out all the distractions, put on my music, and I want you to think about this. Heaven is waiting, and heaven is knocking, and heaven is seeking out for you. Heaven is searching for you. It is reaching out to you. Put on my music if you have, have it back there. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. I want you to simply stretch your heart out to God right now and say, God, what are you saying to me? What are you trying to tell me, God? I want to do what you want me to do. Say those words to God. I want you to think about it for a second because if you're here this morning and you are not 100% sure that if you died right now, you would go to heaven, that's the reason you came. You came so that when you leave this building, you will be 100% sure that when you die, you will go to heaven. Praise the Lord. This is a very important thing. And so I want everybody to think about that for a second. Do you want God to give you the assurance in your heart that when you die, whenever you die, that at that moment you would go to heaven? Only he can do it. The question is, do you want him to do it? Do you want to go to heaven when you die? That is the big question right now. So I'm going to ask you to do something very easy and simple. If you're sitting there and you say, I want to go to heaven when I die, if that's you and you're doing that and you're saying, take out all the doubts because I'm not 100% sure, I want to go to heaven when I die. If you say that, if you want that, here's what I want you to do right where you're sitting, something easy and simple. Simply do this right now. Raise your hand high enough for me to see, and then I'm going to pray for you, and God is going to do a miracle. Oh, my gosh. Look at all those hands. Stretch them out. Stretch them out. Stretch them out everywhere. Stretch them out. Praise God. Would you stand to your feet? I'm going to pray for you right there. Stand to your feet if you lifted your hands. If you lifted your hands. The rest of you remain seated. Praise God. I'm going to ask you to do something. Wave your hand at me if I have your permission to pray for you right now. Praise the Lord. Will you do this? Will you leave your seat as fast as you can and walk up here so I can pray with you? Come on right up here. Very quick. Give them a hand as they're coming. I'm going to take one more minute. I'm over one minute, but I'm okay. Come on. Give them a hand as they're coming up here. Give them a hand. Give them a hand. Give them a hand. Just stand wherever you can. Just wherever you can. Come all the way to the front. Stretch out. Stay in the aisles if you have to. I want us all to pray this prayer together. I want us to all pray this prayer together. Everybody sitting down. Everybody standing. On the count of three, repeat after me. One, two, three. Dear God in heaven, I repent for my sins, my lifestyle, and my doubts. I'm asking you to save me right now. I'm asking you to come into my heart. I'm asking you to fill me with the Holy Ghost right now. Break the devil's chains off my life. Take the death assignment off of me. Break all my addictions. 
I turn away from the devil. I want the life God has for me. Wash me in your holy blood, Jesus. Cleanse all the doubts out of my mind. For I want to know that I know that I know that if I died today, I would go to heaven. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life because the devil is a liar. I will not follow him anymore. I'm joining my church. I'm walking in my church. And I'm going to get blessed by my church. Today, I have renounced Satan and his voice in my head. I know that I know that I will go to heaven when I die. Everybody, let's give the Lord a hand right now. Come on. Give the Lord a hand. Give the Lord a hand. Only because of time, you got to go back to your seats. Come on, everybody. Praise God and say thank you, Jesus. That's a lot of, a lot of stuff happening. When you go to the back, over as you leave this building to the right, there's some things you need to get that are good for you. Letters from God is a devotional. It's God writing you a letter every day. Letters from God for children is how you weaponize your children so that Satan cannot get a hold of them. The encouraged parent is how you get encouraged as a parent to walk with God and untouchable, the secrets of winning at spiritual warfare, 11 hours of training. God bless you. I'm handing it over. Praise the Lord. God bless. Can we give Ivan Tate a big round of applause, church? I'm going to receive from God today. Let's all stand to our feet as you get ready to dismiss. And the altar calls are open. We just want to make one more call. If today you want to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, and you want to know that if today were going to be your last day, you would spend eternity with God forever. If you're ready to repent, if you're ready to give your life to the Lord, then today's the day. I want you to close your head, uh, close your eyes and bow your head. Just repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I give my life to you. Thank you for saving me and for setting me free. Forgive me of my sin and make my life yours. Thank you for filling me with your love. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you need any prayer, the altar team is up here. If you came up for prayer earlier and you want to still pray with someone, we want to encourage you to come on up and get connected. Church, this is 18 years of ministry. Thank you so much for celebrating 18 years of ministry. God is going to get ready to do some great things. It's time for us to grow and go to the next level. We love you, church. And, and if you didn't pick up your copy of the Guaranteed Growth book, you can do so by going on to Amazon and searching for Guaranteed Growth. Do that within the next hour. And I believe we can get Pastor Marco's book to number one bestseller on Amazon. So if you need prayer, please, we want to encourage you. Come on up. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to come into agreement with you. We have a whole team that's ready to pray with you. We love you, church. Remember, if God is for you, there is no one who can come against you. God bless you, church. Have a great day.